Okay, so here's the box it comes with. Inside we have PKE and high frequency antennas. Two key fobs. GPS module. Ultrasonic sensor. Shock sensor. Immobilizer bypass module. Reset button. Alarm status indicator. Touch password keypad. Ignition wiring harness. 22 pin main wiring harness. Start stop button. The brain of the system or the main unit. Nano SIM adapter for GPS module. And of course, an instruction manual. Here are the tools required. A Phillips head screwdriver, wire strippers, heat shrink tubing and heat gun. You can use electrical tape instead, but I prefer to have a cleaner look. A multimeter, soldering iron and solder. Let's proceed with part one of the installation, the ignition wiring harness. Firstly, we will need to find the wires from the car that we need to connect to the corresponding wires from the alarm system. Now, if you're wondering how I got to this position where I see all my ignition wires and so on, you'll need to check out my previous start stop button install video. These will vary depending on the key position of the ignition lock cylinder. When the key is in the off position, you should only get voltage going to the 12 volt constant wires. In my case, I have two 12 volt constant wires. All other wires should have zero or negligible voltage. When the key is in the accessory position, you should get a 12 volt reading for your accessory wire or wires as well as your 12 volt constant wires. All other wires should have zero or negligible voltage. When the key is in the on position, you should get a 12 volt reading for your ignition or on wires as well as your accessory and 12 volt constant wires. All other wires should have a zero or negligible voltage. Finally, when the key is in the start position, or when you're cranking the engine, you should get a 12 volt reading for your start wire or wires. Now that we know which wires are for what, time to disconnect the car battery and get on to the installation. So now we need to connect the various wires that we just tested to the corresponding wires of the ignition wiring harness from the car alarm system. Connect the two 12 volt wires from the car alarm ignition wiring harness to the ones we found earlier from the car. Then connect the rest of the corresponding wires as we see in the instruction manual, just like I've done in my previous start stop button install videos.
If your car key has a chip in it, then you will need to use the included immobilizer bypass module. Connect the yellow and black wire from the 22 pin wiring harness to the black wire of the immobilizer bypass module, or in this case, the grey wire. Then connect the red wire from the immobilizer bypass module to your 12 volt constant. You then need to wrap the RFID sense wires around the ignition lock cylinder about 3 to 5 times to ensure a good connection. Take your original key and place it in the box of the immobilizer bypass module. Let's move on to the 22 pin main wiring harness. Let's tackle the central door locking system first. In my case, I have a negative trigger lock system, so I need to follow the corresponding wiring method. So in my case, connect the white and black wire to the wire which unlocks the doors when it receives 12 volts and connect the white wire to the wire which locks the doors when it receives 12 volts. Connect the yellow and yellow and black wires to ground and ignore the orange and orange and black wires. You can tape them off with electrical tape or something. Next, we have the indicator lights. Connect each of the brown wires to each of the indicator light wires which require 12 volts to turn on the indicator lights. Next, we have the siren wire. In my case, my siren requires 12 volts to power it. So I need to connect the red and black wire to the 12 volt constant and connect the pink wire to the wire from the siren that requires 12 volts to power it. Next we have the fuel pump wire which receives 12 volts when the fuel pump is running. If you cannot find that wire then just connect this to your 12 volt constant. Next we have the door alarm trigger wire. If you have a negative side door trigger then connect the grey wire to the wire which receives 12 volts when the door is open. In my case, there are two wires. One wire has 12 volts when the door trigger button is pressed or when the door is closed, and the other wire has 12 volts when the trigger button is not pressed or when the door is open. Connect the grey wire to that one. Next, we have the foot brake signal wire, which receives 12 volts when you press down the foot brake. Connect the orange and black wire to your foot brake signal wire. Next, connect the two black wires to ground and if your car is automatic, then connect the orange wire to ground as well. If it is a manual car, then connect it to your handbrake signal wire. Finally, we have the remote trunk release wires. If your car does not have an electric trunk release, then check out my previous video on how to install an electric trunk release. Connect the purple and black wire to your 12 volt constant, and then connect the purple wire to the input wire of the electric trunk release. Now we have finally completed installing the most complicated part of this system. Time to plug everything in and test to see if everything is working. Once all is well, we can clean up all of the wires, solder and use heat shrink tubing when necessary, install the PKE antennas and high frequency antenna in the correct places as well as the start stop button, alarm status indicator and any other additional accessories such as shock sensor, ultrasonic sensor, GPS module and touch password keypad. In terms of installing the touch password keypad, the alarm status indicator and the high frequency antenna, I installed them here. 
In terms of installing the passive keyless entry antennas, I installed the front antenna here and the rear antenna here. In order to use the GPS module and the app, you'll need to install a data sim in the GPS module. Once done, the app should function perfectly. Alright, and there we have it guys. How to install a passive keyless entry car alarm system with GPS and app tracking and all these added features. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you like the video, give it a like. If you dislike the video, give it a dislike. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Take care and see you all in the next one.